Dun. Okay. So here I think uh, yeah. Oops. Okay, uh, uh, this is the video from YouTube. Okay. Uh, in the Chinese, but I think this is okay. Okay, so this is uh, the field of the uh, old field plan. So you can find uh, it's a very, very large rainfall. Uh, however, you can find it's a big hole over there. 10 meters depth of this hole. So this is just the first step, okay? Because uh, they they said uh, originally they cannot uh, predict so much rainfall uh, in the upstream. So uh, in the next, I would like to say uh, because the value of the spillway, so they trying to, uh, I mean, uh, trigger the the emergency uh, spillway never used before. This is the first time. And uh, this is the, I mean, the video, uh, but without the sound. So you can find here, this is the, the emergency spillway. They use the, the, the natural overtopping, but this is the first time uh, for this operation. But however, you can find after the, the emergency uh, spillway, this is the original spillway, right? But the left side uh, using the natural slope uh, for the, uh, the uh, spillway. But you can find the great, uh, very uh, severe erosion of the, the, the rock surface. So you can find originally, ori uh, let me go back, sorry. You can find originally, this is uh, just a big hole, but they still need uh, this spillway to decrease the water level, or otherwise they will have a, a very big problem of the overtopping of the main dam. So you can find here, this is a big scour and the erosion of the rock uh, next to the, the spillway. So actually, there is, uh, I mean, a retaining wall of this spillway. But however, after this, uh, almost uh, destroyed, almost uh, destroyed. And uh, you can find maybe the foundation, I mean, the toe of this slope will also failed. And uh, this is the, the emergency spillway here. This is the emergency spillway. This, this is the original spillway. Okay, I think I maybe I can update the the, the website uh, for you for the better understanding by yourself. Okay, so this is the overview of the dam in a uh, two years ago. Uh, this is a big problem of uh, in this area. Okay, and uh, let me go back to the. the 
Oops. And then let, uh, there is a, a IAEG report uh, for this uh, at, uh, the, uh, the Oroville Dam uh, in the 2018. So uh, I will also upload uh, this report for your reference or for your reference. Okay, next I think I will uh, uh, speed up the, the introduction of the, this kind of the sensor. So think about it, for the deep uh, excava uh, excavation, uh, what is the important uh, that we need to monitoring? Okay, so I think the stability of the maybe the retaining wall and the stability uh, of the building next byte uh, is very important. So somehow for your house, you need a incline meter. Okay, so for the retaining wall, you may need an inclinometer. Okay, inclinometer or the IPI in place in inclinometer here. Okay, and of course, you may need a pressure uh, of water pressure measurement, and maybe you need a, a rock bolt or rock nail uh, to make sure the, the uh, the stability of this uh, deep excavation world. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, inside of the detail of this the uh, the truss uh, construction for the uh, the deep uh, engineering. Okay. So I think uh, inclinometer inside of this ship pile uh, is important, and also the low cell to check the pressure because you need to uh, use the maybe the, the hydraulic jack to push the retaining wall. So you make you need to make sure that the pressure is enough or not. Uh, so the low cell is need and of course the strain gauge or the strain transducer uh, for the truss on uh, this steel truss is very important okay <laughs> and uh, this is another uh, construction what we call a caisson uh, structure uh, in maybe in the river or in the ocean area so uh, we need to, to make sure that the stability of this box okay so inside we may have uh, some of the uh, reinforcement bulk meter i mean uh, a strain gauge combined with the steel bar uh, inside of the concrete uh, to make sure that you you, you can uh, measure the, the the stress or the strain of this steel bar okay and also also the inclinometer to find this is another incline degree of this box and of course this should be uh, the water level to check out the the, uh, the water level inside of this box okay and then this is the pile test. Do you, did you ever did the pilot pile test before? No, no. I think Rick maybe have the uh, experience. Yeah, uh, this kind of the pile test is trying to make sure that the I mean the performance of the pile uh, before they use. Okay, so inside of this pile, uh, there's a lot of sensor from the strain gauge, from the low cell. Uh, I mean uh, the the inclinometer or the sister bar here you can find this is the number seven sister bar uh not real sister okay uh, is it just the using uh the same uh size of the steel bar uh to replace the original one and use that to measure the, maybe the stress or the strength of the this steel uh, steel bar okay. So I think uh, this is a typical view uh, for this kind of the pile mm -hmm. test. And the next, I would like to show you the the, uh, the very big problem of the land subsidence or land subsidence. Uh, I don't know. I already heard two kinds of the pronunciation: subsidence, subsidence. Okay. But however, this is the uh, the contour 
of the land subsidence in the uh, central Taiwan. Here, this is a Taichung, and uh, I think this is a Tainan, uh, Jiayi, Tainan. Uh, uh, this is a Zhanghua Yunlin. Okay, so this is a picture uh, in a, maybe in a coastline, near the coastline. You can find the originally uh, the first floor construction became the basement. Okay, and the road uh, have a great settle down. Uh, so uh, <coughs> let me show you. Mm. This is the most uh, important area. Uh, maybe uh, from this 20 years, more than the one to two meters of the settlement in this 20 years. Okay. But you can find there's a line here. Can you tell me what is? Huh? Is someone know that? Fault. No, this is a uh, construction infra inf infra construction. Huh? This is a uh, railway, but high speed railway in the Taiwan. So just next to the the the, <laughs> the very part uh, spot area. So uh, this is a very important uh, for this. Uh, high speed railway. Uh, have you have uh, experience to take the high speed rail in Taiwan yet? Okay, so uh, we trying to avoid the differential settlement of this uh, this line. So uh, of course, again questions if you are engineer how do you know that the settlement situation and how can you prevent okay so there's a several technique from the air lidar or the satellite uh, and the gps uh, for the service okay and of course the benchmark and for the underground uh, because this kind of the very severe uh, lens, lens subsidence problem because of the uh, pumping water uh, uh, oftenly. Okay, so we need to understand which location the people use the, uh, the drill well and the pumping the water. Okay, so we need to understand which location has a lot of the settlement. Uh, compared to the, the the other place, so uh, the underground with a different level measurement uh, is also very important. Okay, so uh, this is the sometime the underground measurement because I just already showed that the satellite with the INSAR or the GPS, and the next I would like to show you how to measure the different level uh, underground. So the first one I think uh, using the anchor and the wire uh, to make sure that you you can measure the, the uh, using the counterweight uh, to measure how much of the sediment uh, in a period of the time and of course uh, you can use the several anchor uh, to measure the different depths and uh, this another choice of the, the magnet ring uh, you can use some of the detection uh, to know the, the place uh, in a different time. And also this is another pipe, okay, with the ring. Uh, this is the sensing ring. Okay, and uh, this is the FBG type. Uh, maybe maybe in the 10 years ago, okay, to till now. Okay, uh, this kind of the FBG uh, subsidence measurement can also provide automatic monitoring uh, in the field. I also developed some uh, kind of the TDR uh, measurement, but right now it is just uh, in the lab, laboratory uh, evaluation, okay, not in the field. So this is the, the sensor I trying to develop. 
Okay, uh, I think we just finished the application of the, the geotech uh, engineering. So next, I'm uh, trying to focus on the structural uh, engineering, especially for the building infrastructure, bridge and the highway. Okay, so I think uh, Taipei 101, have you been there? Okay. Uh, Right now, I don't know how the number, the ranking of the highest, number three or number four. I don't know. I forgot that. But before that, this is a uh, uh, number, maybe the number one, the tallest the building uh, in the world. Okay. So right now, you can, you can find Dubai more than the A. The I think this is the Guangzhou Guangzhou Tower, uh, more than uh, 450 meters. Okay, so for this kind of the tall building, what kind of the sensor? Well, I mean, uh, you you need to confirm the stability. What kind of the sensor may you install in this building? Okay. So I think this is a typical picture, okay? But I'm sorry, this is in the Chinese. I would like to show you uh, another case, the Shanghai Tower, okay? Anyone been there before, Shanghai? Um, uh, maybe after the, the disease, <laughs> okay? So I, I encourage you to, to uh, visit the Shanghai, okay? It's a very big city, a very modern city. Modern land of Taipei, okay, especially in this area. Okay. So, uh, I think this is the Shanghai World Financial Center, the building uh, here, and uh, this is the Shanghai Tower. Okay, so you can find in each floor. I mean, in each floor, they have a. Uh, several kind of the instrumentation uh, including the accelerometer because you know that the toad building uh, afraid the earthquake and also the wind uh, during the typhoon okay so we need a accelerometer inclinometer to make sure that the the i mean the vibration and also the inc incline degree uh, in each in each um, floor Okay, and uh, this is the typical instrument for the, the high building. And of course, maybe we need a, a, a decrease of the magnitude of from the earthquake. We may some use the, I mean, the damper or the, the some of the, I mean, the, mm, how, how can I say that? damper or some of the uh, uh, shift uh, re uh, displacement mechanism, okay, to reduce the vibration of this building, okay? So sometimes we trying to make sure that the, uh, the stability of this foundation, we may use this displacement transducer acceleration accelerometer and also the strength gauge uh, to monitoring the uh, the dynamic behavior of this building, okay? And of course, if you have a truss structure, okay, like the, the sports center, okay, and uh, you need uh, to, uh, like the deep excavation uh, case, uh, you may need a uh, acceleration, you may need a uh, pressure, um, like the low cell, and uh, also the tension, tensile a uh, low cell uh, for the tension uh, and also the inclinometer displacement okay i think this is the for the truss of structure uh, monitoring and of course we may extend it to this kind of the truss monitoring to the bridge okay and for the bridge uh, maybe you need to uh, define which kind of the bridge 
for this this is the maybe the wire bridge so not only the stability of this bridge deck we're trying to understand the most important is the wire the tension of this wire okay and also the stability of oh, for the uh, i mean the uh, the main counter counter uh, structure okay so here you can find the, this is the gps uh, for the stability and uh, also for the accelerometer for each wire because we need to understand the vibration of the wire okay so uh this is the bridge uh, in hong kong i think this is the the way to the, the airport okay have you ever been in hong kong before no if you are uh, going to the, the international airport and and then you need to go to the the, the downtown uh, one is you can take taxi and maybe you will uh, go through this uh, bridge so uh this is another field just i said this is the main counter of the uh, building so we need to make sure that the stability and uh, uh, additionally uh, we need to understand the, the strength or the, the uh, pressure tens uh, tension uh, tension pressure of the wire okay of course in a deck a bridge deck uh, you can also monitor uh, the I mean the curvature the shape of this deck okay so you can use the some kind of the strain gauge or some of the advanced the right now we use the FBG to measure the, the the shape of the deck bridge deck and the next I would like to say just as I say in Taiwan we have a lot of the bridge scale problem uh, so this is a simulation so during the scour uh, this is a, a, a big hole uh, for the uh, the bridge pier and uh, this is the very typical picture ever do you know how high it is in this area Originally, this is the ground surface. Right now, the riverbed have a big scale problem. How tall it is? Guess, guess, one meter, two meter, five meter, ten meter, more than ten meter. Okay, okay. So this is a very big problem in the Taiwan. Okay, at least a lot of sensor and technique for the scour measurement from the sonar acoustic, okay, to measure the interface. And also this, uh, I mean, uh, a ring have a big weight, weight. And uh, for this kind, you can measure the, the, the max scour depths uh, during the typhoon event. But however, for this kind of the weight, if you have uh, the sedimentation again, so it is cannot be used anymore uh, unless the skull depth is more than the previous one, right? Okay, the dropping weight also the same, also can be used to fully detect the maximum. I mean the maximum of the skull depth. Okay, and uh, this is uh, for the uh, FBG. So we put a lot of uh, FBG. So if I have a scour, so this will have a vibration, vibration, vibration. But for the embedded one, there's uh, no more vibration. So I can understand here, vibration, 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 and uh, uh, the no signal, no response. So I can check where is the interface okay so the same the flow device means that when you have a, 
the scar in this area, this box will flow out. So you will know, have a signal, you will know which depths of the box flow out. So I can understand uh, the, the, the skull depths. And this is the piezo electric film. So for this one, if I have a skull, skull the same with the vibration, vibration and the no response. So you can determine, determine the interface of the soil. So many kinds of the sensor for detect the scour, but for these 20 years, I don't think um, maybe 90% of these techniques did not have a good result. Because why? Because sometimes you just put the sensor underground during the typhoon event. It is very easy uh, to fail. Okay, so uh, this is, I think, uh, the Professor Wang uh, in our department developed this kind of the uh, piezo electric field with the gravity drop. Okay, uh, this is the also you can find here. Originally, this is the foundation interface, but the pier shown maybe two or three meters scale uh, already. And uh, this is the case I uh, cooperate with uh, the professor in the Zhongxing University uh, to put the very simple flow out device. Because when you embed this kind of the box inside of the soil, uh, there's no signal. But when it is flow, flow out and the trigger the, the switch, then they will send, this sensor will send the signal and uh, you will know that oh it already flew out and I can understand uh, which depths has a skull problem. Okay, and also we can use the the cable TDR to understand the interface using the EM wave. Uh, EM wave. Okay. So uh maybe uh, from 10 years ago, uh, I'm trying to develop some kind of this wire, steel wire. So maybe this 50% is a positive uh, transmission line. And uh, the other 50% of this wire are uh, using for the negative transmission line. So for this kind of the setup, I may have the EM wave of this. Uh, so I can measure the, the material surrounding uh, of this uh, uh, cable. So uh, this is the picture maybe I already show you in the next. Uh, I drill a hole from the, the top of the bridge and put the wire, this wire, uh, inside of the, the hole and the fix, have a fix. Uh, with this, so uh, I can measure the, the not only the water level but also the the scale. I mean the interface of the river bed. So this is the case in the 2015. Uh, this is the typhoon event uh, with uh, increase of the water level. But sometimes you can find in the beginning there is no scale effect, but after uh, when the water level reach the peak and uh, a small delay you can find there's a big skull problem uh, so uh, i would like to say uh, the skull issue is so uh, difficult and it's not so uh, easy to have a, a early warning system uh, signed because you can find the skull happened very quickly Okay, so uh, this uh, may be more than the three meters of the scar. Okay, I, I'm so sorry. This is the one day. So you can find the scar just happened in maybe two or three hours. Okay, so I think this is not so easy to uh, prevent and have an earning warning system. Okay, so uh, I would like to say uh 
I also develop a simple sensor to give a bridge value signed signal. Okay, like this one. So this is the very simple switch. So I, if I fix the sensor here and the tool of the wire, if I have uh, the value of the bridge, so this send this wire will be uh, pulled up. Uh, so I can understand uh, the condition. Okay. So uh, also I can put the cable uh, just in the lateral side of the uh, bridge deck. So if I have a value of the bridge, then the cable will be shear and then we I will know that the problem. So you already know that the, the video before. So after this, you can uh, find a sign here. Okay. So I think uh, they will be the final, I mean the final um, strategy uh, to prevent uh, the user to cross the bridge ever. Okay. And of course, I think uh, we may have uh, several uh, sensor to make sure the, the stability of the road because what this is the project i involved maybe in the 2000 uh 2010 i'm not sure uh, this is the highway in the taipei uh originally there's uh, uh underpass only for the, the motorcycle it's a very small the underpass uh, un underneath the highway but right now they're trying to design the bigger one because um, more traffic. So, uh, but however, this is the very uh, difficult part because if they try to build a bigger one of this underpass, very, very shallow, I mean the, the cover of the, the highway only maybe 75 centimeter to the 125 20 20 centimeter ever so it's very very not so thick it's just only like that okay so i cannot stop the traffic in the highway more than uh, maybe three months it is impossible right so we need to make sure that the highway is stable or not uh, during the construction okay so this is the real picture again okay? and uh, this is the the construction for the, the highway uh, for the, the underpass so during the construction i put the inclinometer but in a horizontal direction it is uh, very different from the typical one because the typical one is uh, the vertical inclinometer but right now I cooperate with and uh, this is the foundation and uh, uh, you can find we need the uh, underpass construction here so during the construction I need to know that is there any curvature or the displacement of the highway so I put the three of the horizontal inclinometer into the, the uh, highway. So this is, uh, can you see that? This is the three inclinometer uh, in a highway, okay? So uh, I think after the, the construction, maybe only one or two centimeter, two centimeter of the sediment ever, okay? So I think this is maybe quite acceptable um, um, during the construction, okay? Of course, all the instrumentation are automatic uh, for the data transmission and the data acquisition. And I think the railway is another important part uh, for your monitoring, safety monitoring. So 
of course, you need to check out the, the foundation of the railway. And if you have uh, to go through with the, maybe the mountain area, maybe you need uh, some kind of the monitoring for this uh, retaining wall, uh, maybe advanced with the uh, pressure of the anchor or soil or the rock anchor or monitoring. Yeah, this is another field for the railway uh, foundation. So you can find with the different layer, you may need a pressure or displacement or the settlement, uh, settlement here uh, to make sure. And also, of course, the inclinometer. If you have uh, the foundation as an embankment, right? If you have uh, this embankment and uh, for the railway like this one, so this embankment, you need to understand is there maybe some of the uh, landslide, the slope stability at all. Okay. Of course, airport runway also very important because you know that when you face a lot of pressure uh, from the takeoff, okay, uh, and the landing. Okay, so we need to understand the pressure, strength, stress and also the settlement of this runway in the airport. Okay, I think this is a typical uh, structural monitoring from the, uh, the building bridge uh, and also the, the pathway, okay. And the next, I would like to talk about the, the hydrological monitoring uh, in the field. So the first one, I think the water level will be the most important at all. So maybe we can use the uh, uh, throat or the acoustic or radar. This is the acoustic one or the radar. Uh, this is the throat, okay. The second one for the very important uh, index of the hydrological monitoring is the water flow. In the previous time, I think someone we may put a uh, like the orange apple uh, to make sure that the velocity, I mean the surface velocity of the flow. Okay, and right now, if uh, in a very stable area, you also using a propeller here, a propeller. Okay, and to measure the, the water flow velocity in the different depths, uh, in the different depths. Okay. So uh, another one is using the radar or acoustic to measure the, the surface water flow. And uh, for the, the in-depth, Water flow, maybe we can use this kind of the, the instrumentation uh, to make sure the, the, I mean the RPM. Okay, and uh, you can determine the, the flow velocity. And uh, there is another very unique one, is the third one. This is the what we call the heat pulse. They, this sensor generate a heat and using uh, temperature measurement to understand the water flow velocity. Because if you have a higher flow velocity, it means that the heat transfer will be much faster, okay? So they can use this kind of the heat pulse transmission to understand the, the velocity, especially for the, the underground the water velocity. And of course, you can use the combined with the GPS and the acoustic uh, to have another uh, application. This is the, I already know, told you that the water level and the flow is the, the two most important uh, parameters uh, of the hydrological area. But in the field, also you need to understand the cross section then uh, you can estimate the volume of the, the flow, okay? So how can we do that? 
we can use the board with the GPS and uh, use the acoustic to measure the, the interface of this uh, cross section of the river. Okay. And of course, you can use the ADCP to measure the, the water velocity either. Okay. So in this area, because you have a uh, 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 much uh, thick of the, the water uh, level, so may have a higher velocity of the water flow. And of course, another issue that you can use this kind of the gate uh, to measure the, the water flow in the, maybe in the artificial uh, channel or the open channel. Okay, so I think some of you already learned of this uh, theory before. Uh, you can use a different kind of the shape, triangular, uh, rectangular, uh, to measure the, the the water level and the estimate the water flow. And the third one, I would like to say, I already mentioned it before. Uh, inside of the flow, there's a lot of the sediment with the different flow. Out they may have a different kind of the, the particle size of the sediment. One is the suspended load. The other one is the bed load. Uh, suspended load, that means that the particle will transmit uh, in the water. But bed load will transmit uh, in the riverbed, uh, like the jump or uh, the saltation uh, behavior. OK. So uh, for the most issue for the, the hydrological uh, application, uh, here, this is the, the two method to measure the, the sediment total sediment. Uh, one is the, what we call the equal width increment, because for the equal spacing, here, uh, you can have the velocity like this one. You can have a different velocity profile in the each section. And for each section, if you already have this kind of the sampler to capture the, the sediment concentration. So the sediment concentration times the flow, water flow, you can get the the sediment year uh, in that time, okay? So we can estimate the total sediment uh, in the river. Okay, and then the other one is the equal discharge increment. So in this area, and uh, in this area, the discharge, I mean the Q, Q is the V times area, right? Q is the velocity of the flow uh, times the, the, the area. So we can get the equal discharge. Uh, and uh, for this discharge and uh, sediment can be, total sediment can be the Q times the sediment concentration. Okay. So I think this is a very important, but I would like to say in Taiwan, for this kind of the measurement, stay inside of the water. Can you imagine that it is impossible? No, it is impossible. So we need uh, some kind of the very uh, unique uh, sampler or the measurement for the previous. This is the manual. Um, manual. A manual one, um, I mean, uh, uh, the sampling uh, operated by the human. Uh, this is the point integrate sampler, okay? Uh, like the fish, but inside this is a box and uh, this uh, inlet of the, the, the sediment. All right, and uh, another, you can use, uh, because this uh, you needed to use the manpower to uh, take the sample. Uh, of the sediment. So right now we can use this kind of the pump 
uh, to pumping out the water and uh, capture the, the sediment like this one uh, for the analysis. But I would like to say this kind of the uh, pumping machine only can be used then the, the 10 uh, meters of the, the, uh, the, the height. Why? Why? Why this kind of the pumping machine can be used only than the, the, the high difference, small than the 10 meters. Okay, maybe later I can explain for you. Okay, and uh, somehow if uh, you need to uh, measure more than the, I mean, more than the high, uh, the height more than the 10 meters, some kind you need uh, the, uh, I mean the transducer or the sensor inside of the water directly, okay? So I, I already showed you before, this is also the TDR technique uh, combined with the, the wire, okay? The wire, and I put in uh, 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 the, the center of the river. Here, I drill a borehole and I put in the wire. Okay, like this one into a borehole. And I also put some sensor, uh, attach the wire uh, together. So here you can find this is the wire and uh, this is the probe here. Okay, so this wire measure the, the water level and also the, the, uh, the, the interface of the river bay. And for this one, I can measure the, the sediment concentration, suspended sediment concentration in the different depths. So based on this, I can estimate the sediment, total sediment uh, is the uh, Q, uh, I mean the discharge times the sediment concentration uh, automatically, okay? And uh, this is the sampler for the bed load. For the previous one is the suspended load. I mean the suspended in the water. For the bed load is transmit uh, in a, a river bed. Okay, so it is uh, one of the technique uh, to measure the, the uh, sediment concentration. Okay, I think we just uh, reviewed the concept again of the Q. Uh, you need to understand the V and the area. So how can you capture the, the water flow? How can you capture the, the, I mean the geometry of the river, okay? And get the Q. I think this is very important for the hydrological uh, area. So just as I say before, you need to measure the, the cross section uh, by yourself, okay? Cross section by yourself. But it just only can be used for the, the usual time in the summertime right okay but in the typhoon event how can you measure the, the profile of the riverbed especially in the time one this riverbed is not constant at all it will change because of the scour Okay, so uh, I think this is the, the different issue the, for the, the uh, measurement, uh, especially for the typhoon event. Okay, so uh, the next I would like to uh, discuss with the environmental monitoring uh, at all, but somehow because this is uh, some index, uh, maybe need a chemical or other uh, device uh, for the detection. So here I would like to show you from the civil engineering. Right now, the heavy metal or the sediment, or just as I said, the sediment, heavy metal, will be the big issue for the environmental, especially for the water quality, okay? So how can we measure that? From the industrial area, from the mining area, from the agricultural area, how can we measure not only the sediment, but also maybe the chemical or the, the heavy metal. Some kind of 
ah, this is the one way. But I think right now the EPA, the environmental uh, EPA, right? Uh, Huan Bao Su, is it? Ah, environmental <laughs> protection <laughs> agen agency. Ah, uh, in the Taiwan, take care of this issue. And uh, they send uh, so many people to take the water uh, sample and the soil sample for the uh, uh, further analysis. Uh, to to check the heavy metal and uh, some of the chemical uh, content inside. But I like to say right now, okay, you can also use this kind of the pumping uh, machine. Okay, you don't need uh, to use the manpower uh, each month. Okay, you can use uh, this automatically uh, take the sample. And uh, this is the automatic measurement of for the turbi turbidity. I mean, uh, uh, the water, the clean of the, the water. And of, also the, uh, this is the dissolved oxygen, stability, water temperature, and uh, maybe some of the specific conductance. This is the, what we call the electrical conductivity, uh, the measure the, the water conductivity. And also we may have uh, some of the pH a meter of all the water measurement. Uh, and uh, others, like you can see, we can also detect the heavy metal, but I think this is the manual sampling uh, from this. For right now, only some of the, the index, like the dissolved oxygen, turbidity, and also the temperature, electrical conductivity, and the pH value can be automatically measured by this kind of the, the transducer. Otherwise, sometimes as that heavy metal, nitrogen, nitrogen, uh, and uh, also how can we pronunciation like this one, eutrophication. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the the index of the the green vegetation inside of the water. Okay, and this is the index of that. Okay, so uh, this is, I think, another issue for the contamination of monitoring. Uh, so not only the heavy metal, right now we have a uh, Naples. Uh, this is uh, what we call the non-dissolved uh, and the water and uh, the other one is the d napple means that some of the liquid uh, the density is uh, higher heavy than the water okay so some kind of this liquid uh, with the oil maybe from the, the industrial area will lead from the landfill because of the leach oh. okay so uh, just i said this is the underground water area aquifer uh aquifer area but you can find this is the de napple uh our napple um the oil or the, the some kind of the liquid uh the contamination uh, underground so we need to understand the uh, where and uh, how much of this uh underground so can you imagine how can we monitor like this kind of the contamination at all? And then we try to understand the location, the location, and also the concentration, and also the transmission velocity. So how can we capture this kind of the, the information? Oh, very big issue. For sometimes we need a several borehole. Well, or borehole, and put a sensor in a different location. Okay, so we can understand uh, which location or which depths uh, may have the, this kind of the contamination. And uh, if I have a water flow, what is the transmission velocity of this contamination uh, underground? And uh, I think this is the final page for the, the sensor. Uh, this is the new clear power plant. Mm, in the last time you said that there's uh, so many nuclear power plants in France, right? Okay. 
uh, in the Taiwan, we have uh, three uh, operating nuclear power plant. Uh, one is under construction. Okay, so you need to understand this is uh, more uh, dangerous. So you need a um, uh, higher stability for the uh, uh, protection. So uh, for this kind of the, the power plant, you can see for the structure like the dam, we need to make sure the, the stability, right? To cover the new nu nuclear waste. Okay, so uh, for the out outer of the, the uh, plant, may we need some of the, like the inclinometer, micrometer, okay? I think this is the, the similar monitoring way for the, the uh, for the building or other uh, important infrastructures. Okay, so I think uh, well I need to stop here, and uh, maybe next twenty minutes, uh, I would like to take you to have a practice of the MATLAB first. So please. If you already uh, install the MATLAB, please open that. And uh, I will give you some of the resource right now. If you already assign the MATLAB, uh, you have it. Guys, you do have the count of the math work, right? Uh, using your uh, NCU email, right? Right now, I, I would like to say, uh, there's a lot of uh, resource you can find. One is that if you already log in, in this, um, uh, maybe you can find your account information in this uh, uh, option. And of course, uh, let me enlarge of this one. Okay. So here, in the left side, there's uh, some of uh, the resource you need to understand. One is that the MATLAB release the online platform. So it means that if you just try to quickly have uh, maybe the calculation of the MATLAB, you, can, you, you don't need to install the MATLAB in your own computer. You can use the online platform. Yeah. Uh, but I think it need a lot of resource uh, to uh, start over. Okay, so here you can find this is the online interface of the MATLAB. Yeah. So if you already have the account, please. Login and uh, uh, log in the mass work website and uh, check your. I mean, let me do that again. Uh, okay, log in the mass work website and uh, in your. In your account information here uh, to this page, my account page in the left side, you can find the MATLAB online option. MATLAB online option. Okay. In this. And of course, I would like to say please click the third option self past courses. Here, this, this is a lot, lot of course online. And uh, if you have a time, I would like to encourage you uh, to have uh, some of the, uh, the course here. Because each course, if you launch for this one, this is the basic 
of the MATLAB first. Can you find that uh, self pass courses and uh, click in? Uh, so there's a lot of uh, course uh, and a step by step and step by step. So I think if you have a time, you can use this MATLAB code unwrap, unwrap first. But of course, here I would like to say, can you find that? Okay. Uh, so everyone can maybe log in this. Uh, but I would like to say, if you already installed the MATLAB, please open that. And uh, for my lecture, there's a very uh, quick example for here, I think, uh, primer uh, introduction. Okay, but originally this is in Chinese, but I will uh, take you step by step. Okay. Okay, so please, if you already installed the MATLAB, uh, you can open that. And of course, you can use in the uh, online, online the MATLAB first. Oh, your Okay, everyone, can you open the MATLAB? Okay, if you have any problem, uh, please raise your hand. Okay, so I think right now, if you, uh, I, I think some of you already installed the 2020 because uh, before the class, the 2019B is the latest version, but I think right now is the 2020 version release. Okay. But I would like to say, uh, not so big difference at all. Uh, the interface is most the same, uh, just like the office, okay? Just like the office. So you can find a lot of uh, button here, okay? So uh, this is, the folder uh, right now, and uh, this is the workspace, and uh, the right side is the command window. So let us start with the MATLAB first. So you can treat the MATLAB like the, the calcula uh, calculator, okay? You can just uh, use the one plus one. And enter with the answer. Okay, very easy, right? And uh, you can use the uh, two times two. Enter. Okay. So, okay, for this time, please make sure that you can find the workspace here, in the left side. Here you can find the the variable, name the answer and the value with the four, okay? And you can double click and open that with the, uh, this is the double uh, format of the variable, okay? And uh, of course, if you try to have a much complex, uh, calculation, okay? You can use the like the Excel. The way of the Excel. Uh, this is, I think, so easy. Okay. And the next, I would like to show you for the program, you can easily assign the variable in a MATLAB because. In a traditional C or C++, you need to assign 
the fact uh, I mean a variable in the beginning uh, for like the integer b uh, float c but in the MATLAB like the Python you don't need to do that you just assign a equals one and you got the the, the variable of the, the a here okay uh, variable of a here okay and the b equal to the, the two and the c well be the a plus b it's very simple you can do that directly on this command window but someone would like to say uh, professor uh, how can we uh, have a script easy here because this is the command window means that you type each time if you try to store your command with the script please add new script here uh, in the left corner up corner so we may have a new script here uh, like this one and uh, this is already i already used the uh, uh, type before and uh, this is a blank uh, script so for that one a equal to one b e equal to c for a plus b you can have save your own script for this one maybe i use the for the test okay and then you can have a run one button with the f5 you can find here uh, i'm so sorry let me do that again uh, because I just repeat the comment window, so I mean maybe I need to clear. If you type the clear on the com comment window, they will clear all the variable uh, in your workspace. And also you can use the CLC to clean the comment window. Uh, so uh, I just show you uh, here uh, and um, m file this is my m file right i just uh, type a equal to one b equals two c equals a plus b so if i already have this and uh, type run so you can find i already assign oops I already assigned the ABC parameter in this area. But someone will say, Professor, why there's no, I mean, no message on the, the command, command window? Because I already add the same column uh, for this area. If you remove the same column here in the end of the sentence, Okay, so here you can find the message of each coming window. Okay. Okay. But I would like to say mostly I try to use the semicolon in each the end of each line because I don't need to, to see all the parameter in my coming window. Okay. So sometimes I would like to use this, this and this. Uh, for the end unless you're trying to confirm that the parameter you need to show from uh, in the command window okay so i think this is the first uh, technique of the matlab at all and the next i would like to show you uh, trying to use the help if you try to find some uh i mean because in the matlab there's a lot of function you can use uh, like the python for example if you don't understand the sign you can just type the help and the sign okay here you can find 
This is the very easy uh, for the uh, help of the sign documentation. And of course, you can click the detail of from this hyperlink it using a MATLAB documentation. Okay. So I think the help is the most important if you try to learn the MATLAB first. They contain the help contains so many uh, information uh, like the, the detail of each function. And also if you try to learn the MATLAB from the documentation, it is okay because uh, they defined into several uh, categories. Uh, from the beginning, desktop, big basics, and also try to teach you the matrix and the array that, of the MATLAB and also the uh, array the indexing and also the workspace variable, blah, 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 some kind like this. Okay, I think the documentation is very, very useful. Um, anytime if I forgot something from the MATLAB operation or the, the, when I need coding, uh, I will use the documentation uh, for the better understanding. Okay, uh, next I would like to show you the most important is that the MATLAB is very easy to operate the matrix and the array. So how can you build array by yourself? Okay, so for this one, this is the uh, A array containing two of element. One is one, the other is the two. Uh, the other is a two. So let me show you what is the difference here. Uh, let us see, uh, see and uh, clean all the uh, workspace here. Oops. Okay. So let me do this. A equal the one and the two. So in the MATLAB, they use the, the this kind of quote quotation. Uh, okay, so for this one type, you can get a matrix. The size of this matrix is one times two, means that what is that? This means that A is real, one, two. This is a one times two array. But try another way, type by yourself. A being a seven common, a color, and uh, this one, what happened? What happened? Using the semicolon here. They will change to the uh, one, two. It's a two times one array. Or two times array. Okay. So Please confirm that if you try to, uh, maybe sometime we, we show that this is the factor. Okay, in this way. Okay. It's a different operation uh, from the, the, the array. Okay, uh, let me close this. Okay, so if I type uh, one with the same column, here, uh, you may have this two times one size. I say it says different. Uh, this is a different. Okay. And I, I also try to show you that right now the MATLAB is the only program ever I see uh, 
using the index from start from the one. What does that mean? Is if I type A and choose the index of the element one, index equal one. I mean from the C or C plus plus the element index started from what? Zero. <coughs> one and then blah, 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 blah. but sometimes I think this is very confused because you need to minus one and for some programming uh, if you need to understand the, the sequence of the, the, the array but in the matter I think it is a very a straightforward thinking a one means the one a two means the, the second element of this array so uh i think this is a much convenient much convenient uh, for all okay and uh sorry one more minute if i try to build one to ten array how can i do that this is so very easy using a equals one to ten here okay so you can find i can generate one to ten array okay so uh please because we don't have much time so maybe you can learn some of the basics of the man a uh, man uh in this week okay and the next time we will ask Still continue the practice of the method. Oh, so please bring your laptop uh, in the next week. Okay, see you next time. <laughs>